All right, welcome back. And in this particular video, for the second week using Excel, we're going to focus on the chi-square test. So that is the lowercase c on the keyboard, or the Greek letter chi. It's a lowercase chi, and then there's the square. It's not pronounced chi. Uh, it is chi-square test. Um, so if you're familiar with Greek organizations, that is the letter chi. That's how it's pronounced, C-H-I. And we're going to talk about how to do that using Excel. Now, in Excel, it is overly tedious to do this, in my opinion, compared to the majority of stat programs. Why do we do a chi-square test? Well, we use a chi-square test to evaluate the presence of the uh, differences or the lack of differences in the frequency of uh, various groups or categories. So you might be familiar of the two by two table in Microsoft or in um, epidemiology classes where you might calculate a crude odds ratio using a two by two table. Um, well, that's similar to the chi-square test. You know, you have a two by two table. You can also do chi-square test on two by four tables, two by six tables, where you're evaluating uh, multiple um, categories all at once. And any single difference in any one of those um, categories would be sufficient to uh, you know, have a situation where your p-value would say that you should assume that there's a difference there. We should not use chi-square tests when one of our uh, little boxes in our table has less than a five value, then we would probably use an exact test. The most commonly known one is called Fisher's exact test. Now, when I say that this is overly tedious, I'm talking about in Excel only. This is super easy to do in stat programs. But in Excel, we have to manually create a contingency table, and then we could then sort or sum and count things to fill in the details. Now, the example that I've got before you that we're going to use this for is we want to do something like let's assess whether or not there's a difference in the frequency of being in a fraternity or sorority and the frequency of ever having used an e-cigarette. So, you may have a hypothesis that says, well, people that are in fraternities or sororities are more likely to use e-cigarettes than people who are not. And there's a variety of ways of assessing that. Logistic regression probably being the preferable way by most epidemiologists. However, there are other options, at least at the crude level, we can actually go ahead and, and do it in Excel. But there's nothing that's being done here in Excel that you couldn't do by just uh, searching chi-square test online. MedCalc is a free online program that uh, would easily do exactly what, what we're doing um, because you have to do all the work for the test on your own. So we will have to create a table. We can call it whatever we want here. It's going to be these numbers that we put in in these boxes here that are most influential. So to do that we're going to go into Microsoft Excel I'm going to open up Excel over here, and then when I pull up Excel, we have a table. I've made this. You can call it whatever you want, but we need our yeses and our noes, or whatever you want to call them, and we're going to be comparing these versus these. You might be familiar with this, again, from doing the odds ratio calculation. So, I've got this group called Ever Greek, yes or no, and then this one, yes e-cigarettes, no e-cigarettes. So, up here in the top, these are our Ever e-cigarette users. AR is this column, Ever e-cigarette users. And it is all one from top to bottom. We've been there and looked at it. Now, Ever Greek is over here. Now, when I highlight this column, Ever Greek, I see that it has a sum of 113. Now, the count is 408, number of selected cells that contain data. So, if this is 113 for the sum, I can say that it's because I coded it 1 and 0, 
113. Now, no, theoretically, would be all the columns that have data, which it says 408, number of selected cells that contain data. So it should theoretically be 408 minus 113 for the zeros, which is 295. We can do that manually by sorting sort this column, expand the selection. Now, you don't want to expand the selection if you don't have a gap between here and here, because we want to keep all of these together. All right, Evergreek, sort. There we are. Now, I have, I'm, I'm gonna count these just to make sure. So I'm going to count all the zeros to make sure I've got all the zeros properly counted. And let's see, 294 is where that stops. And then down at the end, you can see we've got some missing data right there. But there was 294 of the nodes. So 294. So when I did my subtra subtraction, you know, there's something about counting one row or column in there that makes it have a glitch. On my end, probably not the computer's end. So that's the Yes e-cigarette people. They've ever used an e-cigarette and being Greek. You can see it. And this combines two years of this study, 2014 and 2018. Now we're going to go to the ever use e-cigarette group no and we have to then go to the ever greek population here the sum is 88 so there is 88 cells that have a one in them so one plus one plus one you know there's 88 of them and then the total count of cells is 617 but i'm going to sort this expand the selection well this is fine zero 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 I'm going to have to go down like almost 500 or something. Um, this is a tedious adventure. Much simpler in any other stat, in a stat program. Any stat program is simpler than this for chi-square test. 528. 528. So, no was 528 and the sum of the ones was 88. So now we have our table completed and it's super simple to do. Equal chi, I think it's chi test. I highlight these actual range. What's the expected range? I'll just put a comma there. There we go. There's our p-value. It's 0, 0.00 like way out like 26 decimal places you would just report it as p is less than 0 0.001 and that would be statistically significant we can create a fake chi-square test here on um, favorite color um, and e-cigarette user blue and red and I'm just creating some fake data that are relatively closer in number to let you see how the chi-square test will work on close data. There's the p-value, 0.57. So there's no statistically significant difference in this little fake data set that I created. So there's your chi-square test. If you wanted to calculate the odds ratio, you remember that? A times D over, you know, A times D over B times C. You could do equals 113 times 528 divided by 88 times 294. And that gives you an odds ratio of 2.31.
Now, later on, we'll be doing logistic regression. You'll be doing multivariable logistic regression. You'll be able to know whether or not that's statistically significant or not, how to interpret that number, knowing that if you've ever been a fraternity or sorority in 2014 or 2018 at EKU, you had a 2.3 times greater odds of ever having used e-cigarettes than somebody who was not in a fraternity or sorority at any point. So that's the chi-square test. Pretty easy stuff to do. If you try to do an exact test, it, I think it just gives you, you know, for the function, just a yes or no. So if I comma, you know, it's a, we're not going to fool with it. Um, I've not seen Excel used a lot for that. So exact tests are super easy to do in other stat programs as well. So that's the chi-square test. Pretty simple. Um, if you want to stay on here for a little longer, I'm going to do one. We'll just create one. Uh, we could do one by, by year if you really wanted to. Um, but uh, I'll just pause it there. I'll let you guys maybe do that one. And uh, we'll stop here. And I'll entertain any questions if you have any. Um, you can email me or call me anytime.